So next up we have Yurong Zhang, uh, who's been doing uh, conformal maps in Lean. Over to you, Yurong. First year student at Imperial and uh, arriving a second year student. Uh, I formalized some uh, some some uh, some conformal maps and uh, real world theory in Italy this summer and uh, with some learning steps. Uh, so I first here's a summary of what I did. Um, first I did uh, like formal linear maps in warm spaces, and formal maps between real normal spaces, and uh finality of holomorphic or anti-holomorphic functions. And for I'm working on a little bit here now in the it's eighty percent plan, I think. And websites so including lumpo and rectification and uh, I experimented a little bit with human surfaces but um, the results are very poor I think. the first uh I'm present the definition of uh conformal linear maps and conformal maps so that people have in mind what I did and uh what I am talking about and, Continuous linear map path is said to be conformal if it's a non zero multiple of a linear symmetry. Uh, this definition is not very popular, I think. I actually did, uh, I didn't know this definition before people put it up to me and uh, say you should use that, this definition. And this definition does not require all that to be representation preserving. Uh, we have Two main advantages of this definition. First, uh, it makes all trivial lemmas quite easy to prove, so that we could only we can only, uh, we have uh, we have some very nice APIs about linear isometries, and we can use that to prove all uh, trivial lemmas about this uh, conformal linear maps. And two, we made the definition of conform map simple uh, in the statement would be super short and concise. And there are two reasons we don't require the conformal linear maps to be orientation preserving. But some people think that um, maps should be orientation preserving, but uh, in general, I did not choose that because first, uh, if we, we require the maps to be orientation preserving, then inversion from Spaces of all dimensions will, will, will not be conformal. And to a little bit theorem applies to those angle preserving maps that are not orientation preserving, for example, inversions. Uh, the conformal map is a map half is said to be conformal if it has a conformal differential. There is a statement of the definition. Um, I've made a user friendly lemma that makes conformality easy to pr prove, it, which is uh, honestly a very nice lemma, uh, especially for the cases of two, two dimensional conformal maps. We say that the conformal, a map is conformal at a point, or if it's differential at that point, it's conformal. Uh, this lemma does not require L to be differentiable because. Uh, in Lean, we have uh, the differential of a non-differentiable map is zero, therefore it cannot be a conformal linear map. Because conformal linear maps are injective. Uh, then I proceeded to, to prove the conformality of holomorphic or anti-holomorphic function. Although uh, they are not caught this in, in map word, but uh, we wrote, we wrote holomorphic and anti holomorphic uh, in the top strings. First, uh, the lemmas, uh, two lemmas. The first one is this lemma, which is uh, the most essential part of, of the truth. Uh, we claim that the con a linear map, a real linear map G is conformal if and there is some. Some uh, complex linear map, uh, map 
such that uh, they are equal, or it's a it's a conjugate of some complex linear map. Uh, I deleted the the type of this map because it's too long and cannot be typed in this block. And second, we need some uh, differentiability, some some differentiability over different fields. Uh, given K prime K algebra, uh, a K differentiable map F is K prime differentiable if if it's if and only if there is just some um, K prime continuous linear map such that uh, its differential is K prime. And uh, when we put these uh, these two theorems together, we get the conformality of holomorphic or anti holomorphic functions. Uh, these are pretty elementary facts, but it's actually easier to prove in, in this style than uh, using the inner product uh, or Jacobian things in, that we, we use in, in standard math. And uh, then I am now working on new left in my conformal maps. I'm not conformal at some point of the Hilbert space of the initial algorithm to with non singular initialities locally, a composition of similarities, oscillations, and inversions. Uh, this theorem actually requires, it only requires so a much deeper regularity condition, but uh, the proof that can be done at the current stage is the elementary proof due to Evangelina. And for C formats. Uh, the elementary proof is um, it's elementary but very complicated, I think, compared to those uh, those uh, proofs for weaker regulatable conditions. So first we notice that the of a map of format some form satisfy the lemma here, which is it scales uh, the inner product by some uh, positive constant C, and I call this constant similarity factor at X, and the square root similarity factor and square root T, and uh, it's, sorry, it, the inverse of the square root similarity factor is square root inverse. Uh, just, these names are just temporary uh, names I put on them because uh, the entire section is not here, so I'm going to not by the rename these these uh, functions. Uh, here I'm going to show the outline of the elementary proof, and uh, so people could understand why it's why I, why I think it's uh, not very easy. So first, we need to show that for orthogonal non-zero UV W of the Hilbert space and half conformal around the point X with non-singular differential uh, satisfy the differential equation such that uh, the second differential of X uh, evaluated at U and V in the part of this, the differential of alpha and x and value that probably is zero. And then using the linear independence of uv and w and the subjectivity of the continuous linear map or the morphism uh, after the derivative part of x, we then write, uh, write the second derivative in the form of uh, in the set, as the sum of uh, its first derivative with respect to uh, the factors u and v. Uh, then we use the symmetries of uh, second derivatives and third derivatives to show that uh, the second derivative of the uh, Inverse of the square root of the similarity factors I mentioned before 
uh, evaluated at two orthogonal vectors, the u is zero. And then uh, with some limits on bilinear forms, I want to show that uh, this second second differential is actually equals to some real function, some differentiable real function on some first times the unit product of u and v. And then we show that by differentiating this equation here again, we show that uh, there exists some constant such that this bilinear form factor here is actually a constant on the open set on which uh, our new function f is in the form of. And we integrate this differential uh, equation twice and we get two cases. This is one is the, this one is when the bilinear form factor is non zero. I wrote this for for all because it's it's better if we do this and uh, then we can uh, make an easier by cases in further proofs. If the bilinear form factor is non-zero, then we have the similarity factors where the inverse at x is a, a constant times the norm of some some. The distance between x and some a fixed point x naught plus beta a, a real constant, and then case two, when there exists some x in the open set we are talking about, the bilinear form factor is zero, which is just the negation of this statement. So there exists because uh, it's easier to do in further proofs. Okay. Uh, in case two, there is some beta, some real beta in the fixed vector x naught. So that for OX in this open set we're talking about when square root, the inverse of the square root of the similar vector at x is the inner product plus right, so inner product of x and x naught plus plus beta, the real constant. And Step six is to apply the same procedure to the local inverse of uh, which exists by in, uh, the inverse theorem, which already, which is already in that group. Now I am working on step seven, which is using you know, the precedence of log and arctangent to show that in case one, this beta is zero, and in case two, this x not must be zero. And this is particularly particularly hard for me because we, we don't have precedence of log or argument in, in that group. So what I am going to do is probably to, to write a, a, an algebraic equation of i or, or e and then prove that that, cannot, that is absurd. And step eight, which is probably the easiest step in, in the group. Uh, we plug in the scenario factors for the inverse and we integrate again to finish the proof. Um, and so there's some reasons if I, I chose this proof. There's it is the only proof we can do in at the current state. Other proofs require theories of uh partial derivatives or uh manifolds or even conformal or quasi conformal maps. <laughs> And two, the original proof rates is extremely suitable for me. And it's even better than all other apps or papers that cite this proof. You see, here's an expert from the, uh, from the original paper. And you can see the, the equation is written in a cell that is um, similar to what we have on me. Although uh, the order of the of the vectors L and K must be changing. And for the third reason, the proof is quite common the end. I don't miss that. And I find formalizing this proof uh, quite complicated because we do not have a mature system or API of multi-variable calculus, although we have our 
a lot of theorems about about religion or or even uh, implicit function theorem. However, doing, doing uh, actually doing multi-particle calculus is not easy. Actually, computing uh, the, the the partial derivatives is, is not an, an easy thing to do at the current stage. And uh, the proof uses the precedence of log log tangent, which is not the method. And three, there is an oversight in the original original proof, which is addressed in the a, a very few, in very few texts that set this proof. The, origin, uh, the original proof does not distinguish these two cases. Uh, so uh, it, the proof only, the original paper only provides a proof for the first case, and uh, that is not applicable to the second case. And, of course, the force is that the proof refers to very different matters that are hard to put together. For example, if I want to use the precedence of pi or e, I need to write um, a long proof that, that put these uh, different lemmas together and uh, and, and uh, get the other one. And five differentiating and simplifying a long expression. It's hard in only. I, I cannot, for example, I, I cannot write this equation here uh, in, a, in one lemma because that will cause the time mod, and I cannot differentiate them again because that will cause a time mod. So I need to, to separate this lemma into two pieces and, and then put them together in one lemma. Uh, there are some possible things to work on. First, you know, we should have other lemmas connecting like derivative and iterative after root or as a former Taylor series of the R. I was suggested that I should use uh, as former Taylor series of the R uh, in my statements, but then we find out that uh, we do not have lemmas such as uh, the differential of the first of the first of this function is this function is this value uh, and this this lemma is extremely hard to prove because we, we cannot it's, there's no simple way to to connect this evaluation thing here uh, to a function and when to do a lot of things to make of User friendly API here. And uh, we can also have symmetry of public derivatives of higher order uh, iterative uh, derivatives or as uh, the Taylor series of the R. Uh, in my proof, I only use the symmetry of L and K here of the third, third derivative of Y. So it's uh, a small special case, but also it still took me some time to prove. And uh, we can have a generous theory of conformal geometry or positive conformance and uh, proofs of real with weaker regularity conditions. Thank you.